JavaScript and Python. Just pick any one of these languages, place them on the number one spot and you cannot go wrong with any one of them. Of course, they are the most popular language of all the time and they are going to remain that way at least for the next few years. So you cannot go wrong with these two languages. So in case you just came to know about what's the top one programming language that I'm working on, here you go, you got your answer. But you are not here just to know about the name of the programming language. You are here to know more about my perspective, what I do think about these languages which are coming up and are shining quite a lot in the 2022. You are here to know my perspective, a guy who writes day in, day out, every single day some code for the client, some for personal work and every single one of them goes in production. Also records thousands of video about the latest tech. So yes, that perspective matters a lot and that's why you are here. If you were here just to know about the language name, I'm pretty sure every year there is a guy in the comment section who feel absolutely smart by writing the name of the language. So why not to appreciate him this year? Go ahead if you find anybody who like, writes all the name of these languages, go ahead and write in the comment section which says hashtag good job kid. So let's go ahead and talk about the top 5 programming language for 2022. Before we go there, smash that subscribe button and let's get started. Hey there everyone, Hatesh here back again with another video and in this video we are going to talk about the top 5 programming language for 2022. There are a lot of new programming languages this year where you should keep your eye and we're gonna have a discussion around it. This video is obviously a little bit more than just ranking the languages and showing you the name so there's a little bit of my perspective added on top of that. Before we go ahead and pick the spot number 5 for this video, here's my 2 cent of advice that is going to change your perspective about programming language. Nobody, nobody ever enjoyed programming language by writing its loops and functions and some classes. Yes, obviously we do that all day in, day out, but that's not where you find the true potential of a language. All I'm saying is go on to step two. So the step one is to learn the basics of a programming language loop function classes and variables and solving basic problems or some complementary problem with that. But you're going to truly enjoy programming and the programming language once you start building something in it. So go ahead and explore that part also. Go ahead, explore libraries and frameworks and build something which actually does at least something. So on this checklist of top 5 programming language for 2022, we're going to start with spot 5 which is going for Go. A lot of people call this as Go, a lot of people call it as Golang, whatever you are saying with this face icon here, you know what language I'm talking about. This language is growing all hot in for this year. It's already in production with so many of the applications and so many of the product based companies are evolving in this language. Go or Golang is considered as the modern version of the C programming language. A lot of people call it as the fresh take on the C if it would be designed in 2020 world. This language from the ground up is a fresh take on the programming language, focused a lot on the concurrency and is built to fully utilize the cloud infrastructure and hence you see this, so many of the companies are using it. There is no shortage of the packages and resources available for the Golang, you can build an entire web application and tons of other applications in the Golang. In case this language seems interesting to you, I do have a full playlist on that, you can go ahead and check that out. And this is a very interesting programming language. On spot number four, we have another new take coming up here, which is Rust. Now, you'll see a lot of article that internet is getting rusty. Now, Rust is a low-level programming language with direct access to hardware and memory. You're going to find a lot of similarities of the syntax with the C++. In fact, you have, if you have coded C++ in the past, you're going to find a lot of comfortness with this language. Now, of course, this language also brings us some of the fresh new concepts like traits, borrow checker, and is also revolving a lot about the concurrency. Now, very similar to the Golang, Rust also gives you the ability to trace the data races, mutex, a lot of memory and concurrency as well. Being a low-level programming language, you're going to hear a lot of buzzwords about the Rust in the community which are building the core stuff which is absolutely underlying the hardware or very similar or touching the hardware at least. You're going to see a lot of compilers are using it, a lot of compilers are being rewritten in that, lots of Linux packages are being written in that. So there's a lot going on but 
at a very, very low level, touching, almost touching the hardware stuff. Now, I do agree that in the initial of the days, there were a shortage of the packages for the Rust, but those are the gone days. Now you can visit crates and you can find there are so many of the packages available up here. In fact, you can, they just say that, hey, if you want to install a cargo, you can just go to the crates and pretty much all the popular packages and functionality that you wish for are available there and they are rising in the great numbers. Moving on to spot number three. On the spot number three, we have got a weird choice here, which is PHP. And some of you might be wondering why PHP is on even on the list. Is it not a dying language? Is it already not dead? No, my friend, it is not yet dead. And there is a strange pattern in the world of PHP that is growing up. Now, re in the recent last couple of years, we have seen a lot of engineers which are focused more on either Python or the JavaScript, creating an absurd shortage of the PHP developers. Now, on one hand, where a whole lot of packages and the applications are being rewritten in the Node.js if they could afford it, but there are still mammoth of these applications which are still running and maintaining in Laravel and the PHP, and they are working absolutely fine there. And yes, you guessed it right, since a lot of people are now focusing on JavaScript and Python and other fashionable languages, there is a shortage of the PHP talent. I have recently seen that a lot of companies are now ready to pay even more to people who have experience with PHP. I agree, very strange phenomena, but this is happening right now in the industry. And obviously, I don't need to spend too much time explaining you what PHP is. It is one of the world, world's most dominating programming language. When you outsource your packages into third world countries, a lot of being are developed in the PHP and they are absolutely fine. Laravel is one of the most rising framework in the PHP and it's absolutely smashing the things. On spot number two, we are going to place a Java slash Kotlin. On September 14, 2021, there was an official blog by Oracle which says, introducing the free Java license. So if this article is there, that means there was 100% something wrong going on that they had to make Java into the free license again. Oracle and Java went into the deep waters where they made Java almost like a paid license for a lot of people. And there was a weird license thing going on. And finally they thought that, yeah, we have kind of a make a big mistake, so we need to correct it, and then they came up with this new licensing thing, where it is free again. I mean, understand one fact, there should not be any doubt about the dominance of this language. If you are having a doubt on that, absolutely you are into some kind of alternative version of the world. Java is dominant and is going to stay dominant. Now, I do agree on the point that not of a lot of new application and new products and new companies that are coming up, they are not too much friendly with the Java. They usually prefer the new of the stack. But what about the stacks and the companies which have already written mammoth of the code and mammoth of the application, especially in the financial sectors? These are already being dominated by Java and they have enough of the massive scope to hire millions and millions of engineers to maintain that code. And thus, Java is going to be dominating this year too. Now, of course, alongside with Java, Kotlin is also rising. And I sometimes feel that Kotlin is like those veins on the tree, which are growing because of the Java, but they're probably not going to be standing alone on their own feet because of the shadow of Java. But still, hey, great language. Now, moving on to number one stop. And some of you might be saying, hey, didn't we already picked up Python and JavaScript on the number one stop? That was no brainer stop. That is all good. This is a different version of the position number one. On the position number one, this time we got a new fresh take, which is TypeScript. Now, you can easily identify TypeScript as JavaScript with steroids and the good steroids, not the bad one. A lot more strictness comes up with the TypeScript and a lot of ambiguity that is easily seen in the JavaScript that goes away when you use TypeScript. A whole lot of JavaScript developers are adopting TypeScript and the packages who used to come with the basic JavaScript like React and all of that, now they do have an alternative version of TypeScript. And in fact, a whole lot of people actually enjoy and love writing TypeScript code compared to JavaScript code. The only problem and issue that I find with the TypeScript is that there are not enough of developers who are well trained on TypeScript. They just use TypeScript with the .ts extension and still are writing a whole lot of JavaScript code. TypeScript require a separate dedicated training on itself so that you can take full advantage of that language, not just writing JavaScript inside the big package of TypeScript. But of course, on a whole lot, TypeScript is not going to be stopping anytime soon. In fact, it's going to grow exponentially in the year of 2022. Okay, now moving on to the section of some honorable mention. In the honorable mention, I've got four listed coming up here. C, C++, C Sharp.net, and Swift UI. A quick one-liner for all these honorable mentions. For C programming language, 
usually the first choice because it is imposed by most of the universities. Great language to get started with, but this is not compulsory. You can start with any other language, which might be a little bit easier for you. C++, great, fantastic, but please go ahead and move into step two of C++, explore more libraries. And by libraries, I don't want to say just the STL. Go beyond that, explore something like Crow, where you can actually build an entire web application, talk to MongoDB, how to install MongoDB drivers directly using C++, explore the full potential of this language, explore a little bit about the game engines that are being built or can be coded using C++. C Sharp and .NET. Sadly, I don't have much of first-hand experience in the C Sharp and .NET world, but I have heard all the good things and how the packages of the .NET are evolving to a different scale, but I don't have much to say because I don't have first-hand experience on that. For Swift UI. Oh boy, absolutely loving the updates that they are pushing up. And of course, with so many of the Apple devices that they are selling, SwiftUI is no looking back. And here's the good thing about the SwiftUI. Only people who are having the Apple devices like MacBook or iMac, they can only write code in SwiftUI. Surely there are alternatives of the cloud and all of that, but won't go in debt. So this very big hurdle of getting started with the SwiftUI makes few people in the position that there is a less competition when there are interviews or job openings. There are obviously less amount of people applying compared to Android world or the web development world because the entry is so much hurdled. So ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, this is my take on the top five programming language, a fresh take for 2022. In case I have messed up your favorite programming language, let me know in the comment section and a one-liner thought from you as well that what do you absolutely love about that language? Just the name is not enough. A small thought is always required. I hope you have enjoyed this video. Smash that subscribe button and there is so much more on this channel from crash courses to programming videos to general spicy chit chat like this one and a whole lot of other things. Go ahead, subscribe this and I'm gonna surely catch you up in the next video. Baby girl love my bop and unlike me too. No roof on my top and my babe see through. Hating on the pen don't stop, they ain't gonna feed you. I've been all on my grind so why I need you. Every girl love my vibe and I like me too.